of a three-in-one video today. We're looking at a mini amp from Knob Sound, some ball speakers, <laughs> sorry, and a graphic equaliser. That one's quite sensible. Yeah, who's sniggering at the back? What, what's the joke? Share it with the rest of the class. No, this is the Knob Sound mini amplifier. Uh, the name you can trust, I think, that one. They do quite a few of these amplifiers. This is another one that I was looking at, but I didn't like this one as much because all the inputs are on the front. If you want to plug anything in, your wires are going in the front of it. I thought that was a little bit messy. So I spent a few pounds more, not all that much more, and got this one instead, where it does have the front inputs, but it also has one on the back with a stereo RCA line level as well. Oh, and it's also got some flashing lights on the front, which is probably what really sold it to me. Yeah, a few people asked if I could review some mini amps, so I thought this is a good one to get, just to test out. I don't really have a need for one myself, but I thought I can get it in, have a look at it, see how well they perform. I'd imagine they're all going to be pretty similar. This one's got some wires included with it, an RCA to 3.5mm mini jack, a mini jack to mini jack lead, a power lead on this one. I've got to mention that plug looks a little bit odd on there, like it's been on a diet. Now, I know people love talking about plugs, so I'll mention that in a moment. But we've got the power brick here, which is a quite a hefty size. Of course, the actual amp is tiny, but the power brick is larger than the amp itself. But back to those wires for a moment. Yeah, this is an unusual plug. It doesn't have a fuse in it. Now, I know whenever I mention plugs, people go a little bit crazy about how big the UK plug is and that isn't it amazing and all the rest of it. All these people have never traveled anywhere. But yeah, plugs are different in different countries. It's not that exciting. You could go on Wikipedia, you'll find a whole lot of information about plugs if you're really interested in plugs. But yeah, the UK ones look like UK plugs and they look like the one on the right, not the one on the left. That doesn't have a fuse in it. And people say, well, why do you need a fuse in your plug? Don't worry about that. I'm going to use this plug on the right rather than the one on the left because I don't trust that. That looks a bit dodgy to me. It uses a standard plug on the other end. This is an IEC C7 plug if you're interested in finding out more about plugs. So there you go, it's one of those. And then people are saying, no, it's a kettle lead. No, kettle leads are a different one. That's an IEC C15. But this adapter is a little bit unusual. Replacement AC adapter. What happened to the original one? This is the other one inside the box. Anyway, barrel plug on the end of there, which plugs into the back of the mini amp. And of course, that IEC C7, not a kettle lead plug, plugs into the side here. And I'm using my own, as I've mentioned before. So look on here, though. Power supply, output power. Depending upon what type of power brick they've given you, you get a different level of output power. Now, my 19 volt one isn't even mentioned on here, but of course, then that combines with the ohms on your speaker. So it's all a little bit odd. I mean, it's going to be loud enough. There's going to be no problem with that. Metal case on here, aluminium knob on the top, which is volume and mode. If you press it down to click it, we've got a power button on the right hand side. Oh, we've got some film on here as well. Once removed leaves a mirrored front. Hello, Baldy. Hello there. So looking at the front of here, we've got the headphone output, the line in, and the USB input. You can use this as a DAC, a digital to analog converter, if you attach it up to a PC via USB. Looking around the back, we've got the speaker plugs at the bottom there, or banana plugs, binding posts, whatever you want to put into those. You can choose power input in the middle, RCA at the top rubber strips on the bottom to stop it moving around. We'll put the power into the back of here and switch it on. And you'll see there's two red lights on there. And when we press the button here, this moves between the different inputs, which are indicated by this blue display on the front, which shows through that mirror. The two lights, well, the left one shows that there's power going into it and the right one shows that it's turned on. So if you turn it off, the left one remains until you pull the plug. The instructions show you what those different icons on the front meant, as well as giving you some suggestions as to what you could plug into this if you couldn't really think of anything yourself. I'm going to plug some speakers into mine because it's not much use without. Now, those speakers I mentioned at the beginning, those ball speakers, well, they're a little bit unusual. Now, the reason I've got hold of those is a chap got in touch with me all the way back in January 2019 and said he's got these speakers, he's not using them, would I want some? And I thought, well, yeah, I might as well because I had this idea that I wanted to look at these Grundig ball speakers at some point. I'm kind of intrigued by the design of those. I haven't really been able to find any at a decent price that are in good condition.
rendition. But when somebody offers you something that you think, well, it might be similar, I'll tuck him up on it. So here's what you get inside the box. There should be some chains in here to hang these from the ceiling, but he's got all the wires and things with them as well. I don't plan on hanging them from the ceiling. But yeah, you can see the Technics logo is upside down because that's the way up it's supposed to really go. And you'd have this chain which screwed into that hole in the middle on the top. Then a wire would be run down from the ceiling to the uh, device. In my case, I've got these cradles that you put them onto. So you don't have to hang them down. You could have them the other way up and spin them around so you can't see the logos. The wires on here are a little bit unusual. There's one wire for each speaker. So what I've done is got one of these adapter things. So I can plug the wire into there. It splits it out into the two wires that I'd normally plug into the back of an amplifier. So that's the way I'm doing it. You could have rewired it, but I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just using the existing wiring. So there you go. Plugged them into the amplifier. I'm going to play something over Bluetooth and see what it sounds like. Now it's probably not coming through properly on the video, but these things sound terrible. There's just no bottom end on it whatsoever. It's all treble, very, very thin and tinny, harsh and unpleasant to listen to. So I looked up the model number for these speakers online and it took me a while because SBS 30As weren't anywhere, but it turns out SBS 30s are in this brochure from 1987. And you can see that they're AV surround rear speakers. Now, it's important to mention that because back in 1987, that's when ProLogic had just come out for the home. This was an era when your rear speakers didn't have to have a full dynamic range like your front ones would do. They were just small effects speakers. It's not like a modern day Atmos setup where you'd have your rear speakers that were as good as your front ones, if at all possible. These speakers were designed with that in mind for a little bit of rear ambience sound. It mentions here on the ProLogic spec that it was a limited frequency range mono rear channel. So yeah, according to the specs on these, it says for rear channel ambience only. So unsuited for what I was using them for. They're not for listening to music. I will use these speakers instead. I think these will be a little bit better. And rather than using banana plugs this time, I'm just going to wire them into the binding posts instead, just to show you the alternate way of wiring things up. So with those in there, let's have a listen. Right, it sounds fine now. I'm still just listening to Bluetooth over this, but it doesn't sound anything like it did before. It's a proper full frequency range on here now. I've noticed you really have to turn it way up to get these lights flashing on the front though. At the volume I'd normally listen to, which is actually at this point, I'm barely getting two lights flickering every now and then, and most of the time it's just one. So this little amplifier has more than enough power to drive these speakers to a volume level that I wouldn't want to listen to. And then I thought, well, what else could we talk about here? Well, this little amp does not have treble or bass controls on it. So what if you wanted to add something like that? But how about also at the same time you add extra inputs to it? And the way you could do that is with a graphic equalizer like this one. With this, as well as being able to adjust the tone of the sound, we can also plug four things into it. So we can plug a whole hi-fi virtually into this little tiny amplifier, send the output into the amp. You can even send something off to a tape recorder if you wanted to. Now, despite appearances, this is not an old product. You can buy these new on eBay for around about £80 or just under, which isn't an inconsiderable sum of money. So I was hoping that this was going to be something decent. I've got a good graphic equalizer on the main hi-fi, but I just wanted to see how these modern day ones stacked up in comparison. And as soon as I turned it on, I kind of got the idea as to what these are designed for. Karaoke bars, I think, with all the flashing lights on them. Normally, I'm a big fan of things that flash on hi-fis, lights, graphic equalizers, VU meters and things. But this, this is a little bit tacky. Anyway, you can see this bus on the left cycles between the various inputs on the back. We've got an LED in each of these sliders on the graphic equalizer. It all feels very plasticky, though. Not very well made made at all. Certainly doesn't feel like it's worth £80. We've got some wires included with it. I'm going to plug one of those into the mini amplifier from the output on the graphic equaliser and then on the auxiliary input on the equaliser I'm going to plug in my record player. But it's going to go in the line output on this one. It doesn't have a built-in preamp in either the graphic equaliser or the mini amp. I'll put a record on and we'll test it out, see how this graphic equaliser affects the sound. Now, if 
you're not careful, you can really mess the sound up with this. You've got to be quite restrained in how far you move them. By the way, you can turn those chasing lights off by just pressing a button on the left hand side. And in addition to that, you can bypass the whole graphic equalizer section and just have the audio go straight through. There's a button to take your settings off at the bottom there. And then above there, there's a two buttons which adjust the height of that display in the middle, the sensitivity of it relative to the audio that it's listening to. But by now you've no doubt noticed that the display in the middle is not reacting like a spectrum analyzer should do. I'm playing a sine wave sweep through it here, which should be lighting the bars up from the left to the right, one after the other. It's not happening. It's ignoring it completely. It's only when you play music through it, which has a recognizable beat, that the display starts flashing in time with that beat. So it's not a spectrum analyzer, it's just some kind of novelty display. Now you might have noticed earlier on that one of the bulbs on my graphic equalizer is out. It came out of the box like this and that lever is also bent over towards the left. The whole thing has a very cheap feel to it. It's a shame that this is where things have ended up nowadays. I know before I mentioned graphic equalizers being something that I do value in a hi-fi system, I wouldn't have this in there though. This is a really horrible device and I paid about 80 pounds for it. So it should be better than this. You're much better off getting an old one. Okay, admittedly, it gives you those extra inputs on the back which are useful although you do have to cycle through the one after the other i prefer it if they had a separate button for each one the graphic equalizer section though isn't very good if you move those sliders anywhere other than in the center it makes everything sound pretty bad but i just can't forgive any product that gives me a fake display it's dishonest and this therefore has to go and i won't be recommending it to anyone but we'll just circle back to the mini amp for a second because there's a couple of things I haven't yet tried, one of which was plugging it into the USB port of the computer to use it as an audio output that way. And it appears at the top and I can select it and it works fine. And of course you can also use it as a headphone amplifier, plugging your headphones into this will switch off the output to the speakers and it works fine as a headphone amp, no problems there at all. One thing I've yet to see in any of these mini amps is a built-in Fono preamp. I think that would be a useful addition. I'm not too sold on the design of this one though with its mirrored front. It's a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Also those power meters, they barely show up unless you turn the volume really high. Although I do like the fact this one has RCA inputs on the back so you can keep things a little bit neater than you can with some of the other models. If I hadn't been making this video, I don't think I'd ever have a need though to buy one of these mini amps. If I I'm using speakers with a computer, they're active speakers with a built-in amplifier. They don't need an external one like this. I suppose there's somebody out there that's got some old bookshelf speakers they'd like to plug into their computer and maybe this would be suitable for them. If so, there's links in the video description text box, but just make sure the speakers you're using are suitable for the job you're putting them to, unlike me with these old balls. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.